and obviously the issue of the bins um, because King Street is very narrow but is still a main thoroughfare we just kind of been spilling out into the pavement just because there's nowhere basically nowhere um, for them to go and that's all I've got if you've got any questions mm. or if you'd like to hear from me great um, yeah thanks um, Kathy um, Freddie, do you want to add any, sort of give us a bit of background to the, the, the proposal on... Um... Um, yeah, I mean... <sighs> <laughs> um, so, a bit of background. I do similar buildings like this in different cities. I've done mostly in Swansea in Wales, and they work really well. Um, for people that are perhaps not ready or don't have the financial means to go into their own flat and be paying what it costs to have your own flat and bills and council tax and all those things. So this is a, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a nicer, like uh, shared house for uni students, if I can put it that way. Um, so it's the next step on the ladder between say living with your parents and getting your own place. And um, we, uh, we manage them ourselves and we, we, uh, we're very hands-on with the management. We have cleaners come and clean the communal areas uh, at least fortnightly. We have WhatsApp groups with the tenants, with a property manager, just to sort things out like dirty dishes, <laughs> etc. Um, so, and, and our tenants, you know, our tenants are happy. We only do ensuite rooms. Uh, you know, the uh, licensing standards uh, don't expect you to do that. Um, but we find that tenants are happier, they stay longer. So all our HMOs are all en suite, as is this one. Um, and yeah, we, we obviously we work to the minimum space standards. We try and exceed them as much as possible. Um, I think it's, they're ridiculously small. I don't know who set the Mendip space standards, but they're six and a half square meters for a bedroom. That's what is uh, in the policy. Um, and ours for this proposed scheme are from nine meters squared to 18 meters squared, all of the bedrooms. The communal areas exceed the recommended space standards as well, not recommended enforced space standards. Um, so in terms of policy with regards to space, uh, there's nothing that doesn't comply. Um, I need to have a read of this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great, thanks. Um, Um, who do you market them to? Is it like young professionals or like lower income? Like what? What's your user base? Tenants? Who are your? We. It depends on the location. I think for here, it would be best for young professionals. I have several friends who are lodgers in uh, in 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 Froome, and it just doesn't suit their stage of life having to share with a living landlord, and they can't afford to rent a flat. So I think for Froome there is a real need for young working people. Um, in other areas we've done, we've leased them to charities. We, we, you know, we're open um, to whatever exit, but I think what's most required in Froome is young professionals, in my opinion. Thank you. Hi there, I'm hey. Mark Dorrington. I'm the town councillor for the area in which you're hoping to do this. So thank you for taking on this building. It's been a nice all for years um, and uh, various schemes have come and gone so I'm pleased that someone's happy to take it on. Um, I am concerned about the number of flats you've got in there. I know you're saying it's um, complying with regs. I have family members who own HMOs in a different city and they're quite a bit bigger than this. And they have young professionals in there, not, um, they haven't tried to cram in as many as this per square meter, that's for sure. And I think the gist of what you're gonna read there from the Civic Society echoes that that mm. they are concerned about the amount of people that are going to be in there. Um, you say you've done these premises, uh, these properties before, mostly in Swansea. Mm. Who will be the local manager for Froome? Uh, so you have, you have a manager and a WhatsApp group. Who will be react? Who will be a key holder? Who will turn out when it goes wrong? Who will, if if you're operating from Wales? I actually live in Froome. Okay. So in the, well, we don't have the building yet, so we don't have. An employee here on the ground but our lettings agency that we use is based in uh it's a place called ditch it which is near bath and west showground if you know where that is um so we're local we're from we're all from somerset we okay. go to swansea because it was part of the business plan but we're somerset based business a lot yeah. cheaper than through yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so my 
concerns will only echo what the civic society although i, I thought of it before i saw the, mi the minute today um i think there's too many places in there i'm, I'm concerned about the small com although you say the common areas are quite you know compliant i still think they're quite small in my, in my experience of other places and um i would like to see you have fewer rooms in there i mean the fact that you you're using um did you say you're using like uh, cloakroom wash basins in the en suites to make that fit yes yes so in order to give so every room an en suite we have to compromise somewhere so essentially yeah yeah so that's um again an indicative of how small it is but those are my concerns in my experience of other places like this i think it can be done a bit better yeah well i'm open to you know to to to, to amending um you know, possibly changing a bedroom to a more communal space or, you know, um, if that's what's required. I just want to get the building back into use and do something with it because flats don't work. I've run the numbers on flats and I just can't get it to work. So, you know, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, uh, like Mark, hugely supportive of getting this building back into use. Um, I, I hope you can find some interested businesses to take the the ground floors uh, and i know there's going to be a good market for um, those uh, those spaces above but you know just in the interests of humanity and quality of living it does feel a little bit cramped and that if you were reducing the number of occupants you might also start to address some of the concerns from the waste partnership about the amount of storage space for recycling etc mm. yep Thanks for coming along tonight. Um, I, I do agree absolutely in terms of the use of the building. Uh, when I looked at this, one of the concerns I had is, and it's already been brought up, about the recycling space and bins and what have you. Um, as it's a, it's a, you're going to manage it, mm -hmm. particularly a management company, you're going to have a private contractor to come and take the waste away. Private collection, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, are they then able to enter and access the bins, or will they be expected to be left out on the pavement? I think we will need to do it so that they are able to enter. But there's a couple of security concerns to be addressed with that. Um, but yes, the idea is private collection. And as far as I could see it at this point, I, yeah, it would, be, it would be that they would come in and get the bins from the bin store. Maybe that we'd need to put a door um, at the top of the stairs leading into the HMO proper and ha you know, be able to have them lockable. Because um, that's, yeah just a security concern. But. Your, your drawings seem to indicate, correct me if I'm wrong, they seem to indicate individual bins or is that individual recycling? That one has been revised. Okay. Um, I've now got the, I've now got the, the bins here and the bikes all in their own. Okay, but they are, they are for communal use, they're not individual. They're for communal use, yep. X number of flats sort of bins down there. So they're, they're the larger open top Yes, exactly. And yeah. that, that, was, that was my concern in terms of, are they going to go in to collect them or they, are they be expected to be wheeled out? Because there is no absolutely no space. Yeah, well, that was my, th my thinking. There's nowhere to put them on the street. So I think we have to have, we have, to have them come in and get them. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. The other thing, if I can just quickly flag, is um, I've just read a little bit of this, and it says that eight of the 12 units of a size that meets licensing for two adults. Now, our application is, is for 12 residents, just to be clear, and it can be conditioned as such in the, you know, in, 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 and also licensed that way. The, you know, it will only be licensed for the amount of communal space that the standards allow for, but 12 occupants is what we're, is what we're doing here, not 21 or whatever this says. Yeah, cool. Um, I. I do. I want to talk more about the the retail unit. So, if you've got any comments that you want to make about the uh, um, HMO application, that might be better. Um, not really. That hasn't already been said. I mean, what um, Jane jumping if if I'm going off piece a bit. But what would be great to do is meet with you um, and sort of go through some of our thoughts mm. and see how, as, as you said, you know, you're willing to to, to sort of amend a bit here and there yeah if the application uh, could be left open i'm happy yeah. to work with you guys and we, just get something done you know we, we i mean i think you've heard from 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 us as you know we we really appreciate you putting the effort in for this building as, as mark said it's been an eyesore for years we've been banging our heads against the wall trying to do something you know trying to get someone in so we really fully appreciate that and we'd love to you know sit down and and sort of around a table and and you know just just see where 
where you know some of our thoughts can or our sort of issues that, that have been raised can yeah. can be addressed um yeah. i think we've got would we have time to do that jane yeah we would so that would be my um yeah my, yeah. my call i mean we'll we'll have a, yeah go through that in a minute uh, jane wants to raise another issue There was a question raised by the civic society's comments is where do people do their laundry is that like um, um we would have we would have under counter washing and drying facilities we probably we have at least two washing machines and two dryers and they would likely go underneath where the tea and toast area is uh, based on these comments i may need to address that layout um so to be continued, but there will be on-site laundry. I was just yeah. wondering. <laughs> I did. I said it'd be under the tea and toast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jane. You next. No, if it's in that thing, you carry on. Um, have you got any idea at the moment? Just just looking at this, mm. um, of what sort of commercial enterprise you're looking to to entice into those spaces. I think it would be easier to get tenants in as two units and then that also ties in with what how it looked originally when it was a chemist am I right I think I, we're reinstating what was originally there and I think actually having two smaller shops it would be easier I think if with one big shop it's going to need to be a big kind of blue chip which I'm not sure is what the town needs um, <laughs> Burger King, maybe. <laughs> Can I jump in there? <laughs> well, it was, it was, sorry, Jay, just to finish, it, it was partly that because, um, you know, Froome is a destination place now, mm. you know, a, a foodie place. Yeah. Um, and it would be, you know, whatever your intentions might be. Um, and the layout here mm. is for the residents above, you know, if you're planning a, a bar, restaurant, wine bar, whatever. It's A1 resident, uh, A1 uh, retail. So at the moment it's it's, it's shops, okay. which would be nine to five, uh, eight to six, whatever it is. Yeah. So what I was going to say <laughs> is um, in the article in sorry, my name's Jane. I'm the planning and development manager. Um, the article in the Froom Time, I think you were quoted as saying that you'd like to have some further discussions with the town council about possible uses for the, for the retail units, um, and I suppose following on from perhaps coming in about to talk about how the HMO aspect can be amended. It would be good to, to discuss that with you in more detail about the commercial uses as well. Um, what you would be looking to lease them to individuals or community groups, perhaps? Yeah, um, I'm happy to sort of see what's required. Um, not a, not another charity shop. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah. I mean, it, it, if you're happy to come in and talk about it, that would be great. Because of course. since various people have read that article in the newspaper, I think I've heard about four or five suggestions of what it could be used yeah, for. Yeah. So um, it, um, outside of this meeting, it would be great to discuss those with you in more detail. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. We have so many community groups and they're all desperate for spaces. And then like, we've got community groups coming out of our own. Really? So there's a demand for it? For, for me, if you know, I'd be happy even to, to take a little less rent if I knew it was going to be full. That's um, so whatever it needs, you know, I'm to completely open to that, whatever, really. Okay, that's good to hear. Mm. Um, I guess the other thing that just occurred to me is that mm. this building is very much in the heart of the Froome Independent Market on uh, the first Saturday of most months, um, probably just about across, Sunday. sorry, first Sunday, spoke. Um, and it's sort of just across the road from um, the main performance stage of those events. So um, I think, you know, making sure any prospective tenants are aware that there is a, a monthly noise hazard quite apart from the uh, access, etc. that uh, is a bit challenging. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's no proposed um, parking in this scheme. It's, it's anticipated that they're not going to be car users. Um, 12 bikes, uh, middle of the town. So in terms of access, that shouldn't be too much different. And in terms of noise, at town centre living, young people, I, 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 I hope that it wouldn't be a problem. Um, I can't see it being an issue. Just following on from that, I forgot to mention that Somerset Highways are completely happy with the fact there's no... That's good to know. It's good to know. Town centre, it's the same as the St John's 
UN's building that we worked out a few months ago. Yeah, OK. And good to see that we've just been joined by Councillor Anne Hills. Hello. I'm so sorry. I thought the meeting started at 7. I thought I was early. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, can you briefly catch me up so I don't ask all sorts of questions and say all sorts of things that have already been covered? We've done the HMO part of it. We're just talking about the commercial space underneath. So you've come in at probably just about the right time in. Um, so Anne, Freddie, Freddie, um. Anne. Um, hello, hello. <laughs> I think Anne's got a few questions or um, just or just points to make. All, all I know is I've read the Froome Times article. Yes. I am I am one of the councillors, but I'm not on the planning committee. Um, but I wear lots of hats. I'm also involved in lots of community groups. Mm -hmm. um, some some of which would really benefit from, if you like, a not-for-profit retail space. <laughs> um, but because they are community groups, charities, not-for-profits, they, they, they aren't commercial. They can't afford to rent um, a shop. Mm. What they could do is perhaps with the support of the town council share a community space in the town center okay um so how would that look oh <laughs> good heavens i don't know <laughs> but also i don't i don't know whether you've um seen but uh yes was it just yesterday Froome was awarded a banking hub I did see that yeah so what we would because the question in the Freedom Times, if you are correctly reported, said what you were interested in working with the town council to find out what the town needs. Yeah. What the town needs <laughs> is space for a banking hub. Um, I, I can't say a town centre post office because that's not up to that, us, mm -hmm. that's up to the post office. Um, it's space for the credit union to operate. Mm -hmm. It's space for um, some maybe debt advice from uh, Christians Against Poverty or the um, debt line. It's space for people to just pop in and ask a question um, that's not necessarily from a bank, but to do with their finances, maybe benefits, advice, things like that. Yeah. Um, so in answer to your question, that's what the town needs. Not necessarily another coffee shop, not necessarily another wine bar but but those sorts of ideas thank you, thank you all right and do you not want to also suggest the share library which is looking for a new well uh, yes um i mean the other one of those community groups i didn't want to be selfish and talk only about the share shop but um i i don't know how much you know about the the, the history of the share shop um Andy Jones is also one of our trustees, and I'm one of the trustees of the Share Shop. We're a charity. Um, so renting out um, items so that people can borrow, not buy. Um, in, in recent years, because of the cost of living crisis, we've, um, we've seen a real spike in the number of concessionary member members um, who can you know, borrow an item um, for a week and save space in their home, space the cost of, bu of buying it. Um, so not only does it um, benefit people who are on a, a, a limited income, it also helps the planet because we're not producing lots of goods for everybody to have on their shelf in their garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've used the share shop. <laughs> You've used the share shop. Um, to, to, to be honest, uh, a town centre location would be great for a sort of click and collect idea mm -hmm. for the share shop yeah. but for people with cars and i know when i just came in we were talking about parking um it's not ideal for people who want to pick up a pressure washer or whatever mm -hmm. yeah. but but certainly that town centre location could be one of the if you like front desk um uh, locations for use of the share shop items that would probably have to be stored elsewhere possibly don't know like a kind of argos for share shop it, everybody uses that and that, <laughs> yes absolutely the argos front desk yeah yes. okay <laughs> sounds like a good idea yeah Jane, do you want to jump in again i was just going to say to anne that um uh, we 
we did have a brief discussion before you arrived about you know possible uses um and freddie's happy to come in and have more detailed conversations with us about that um because anne's got some suggestions and i know there are other suggestions out there as well but you know it's great for Anne to be able to come along and put that to you directly yeah um, so yeah and i suppose just to reiterate what you know i've heard from the rest of the committee that you know absolutely delighted that you're taking this building on um and you know i think that the principle of the hmo is great just needs a few tweaks mm. and again you've agreed that you'd be happy to come in and talk to us about that yeah of course i'm not sure whether it seems on here that the principle is agreed with but i need to read it properly yeah <laughs> read that one yeah. i mean i think as i'm just gonna echo what james said really i think mm. we're all really delighted you're taking it on we're really excited um to get rid of that big blue expense that's been there for a number of years. Yeah. Um, it'd be great. I mean, what I'm going to propose is that we defer any decision tonight. Yeah. We arrange to meet around a big table, get some plans out, out yeah. and just go through, you know, with Anne and, and go through the whole lot if, if, if yeah. you're agreeable to that. And yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And Jane and I, we can fix up a date and, and, and get everyone together. Yeah, I'll have a good read through this and I'll yeah. make some of the amendments that I feel are okay. necessary based on that. Hmm. And then yeah, bring that to whenever we next meet, and great. we can uh, Perfect. see what we think. Yeah. Sounds great, Freddie. Is yeah. everyone agreeable to that? Yeah. Does that make sense, Jane? Yeah. I just wanted to clarify those comments are from the Froom Civic Society. Yes. Not the comments of this committee. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So the the Froom. Yeah, they're not our comments. Yeah. The Froom Civic Society um, comment on all the applications that are submitted in Froom area, and we often make reference to them. Um, so those comments will have been submitted directly to Somerset planners mm -hmm. um so that so they will be looking at those as well and yes whilst we agree with the sentiment of some of what they've said that they're not our comments mm -hmm. so we're deferring the application on the basis that you've agreed to come and talk to us to to look at how the scheme could perhaps be improved yeah because i'm sure there's a way it just it yeah. just needs to be it needs tweaking i understand that you know yeah, i think um, we probably yeah. agree with that and mm -hmm. really hope that we, yeah, we yeah. Can get to the, the the waste the waste um, situation is it does require a bit more thought, yeah. um, but I'm sure there's a solution. Sure. Um, and then, yeah, bedrooms, communal space, perhaps give over the biggest bedroom for another kitchen lounge or, or you know, a bit more, bit more thought, and then we can get there. Thanks very much for coming. So I'm going to pose we, we defer. Um, so officially we we'll defer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, thanks very much for coming, Freddie, and um, look forward to um, meeting again and um, yeah, moving forward. Thanks very much. Great stuff. Day. Will you contact me and and uh, yeah, we'll yeah, contact cool. you. Cool, amazing, great, great thanks stuff. Very much. All right. Good time. Okay. Yeah, you're both willing to stay for the rest of the week, obviously. Yeah. See you, see you later. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Make clear to me. Maybe Jane should take over for the next. Ooh. Got one more meeting to go, you know. I have got one more meeting. Yeah. Um, maybe on the last one, I'll just submit really random comments and let you deal with the fallout. <laughs> I thought you'd done that tonight. Um, <laughs> the next one is five, five, seven, four, thirteen to fourteen Christchurch Street West. Which, if you look out the window, you can see it. Yeah. It's just across the road. Um, and it's the change of use of the public house to offices for a temporary period of three years. No internal or external alterations proposed. Um, so location plan is up. Um, I think we all know where it is. Um, these are the existing plans. As you can see, it's quite convoluted. Lots of rooms, um, cellars, outbuildings. Um, it's stood on the same site since 1770 is the first note of it um, and it's just been changed over the years um, just bits added on bits taken away bits changed 
Um, these are the existing elevations. I think they're the ones from Smithy Lane and round the back. Um, and then this is the front and side elevation um, down Christchurch Street West. Um, and then these are the proposed plans from the original application. So there was an application a couple of years ago to bring the pub back into use. Um, so as you can see, bedrooms, office spaces, etc., uh, restaurant to the rear. Um, and then the proposed plans for this application are to keep this, but change the bedrooms to offices, um, and then reconfigure this central loo area. Um, I think just to make it work better as an office rather than a hotel slash pub. Um, the applicant has said it's only for a couple of years. It, he's only putting a temporary application in because there's so many pubs um, along this road anyway and going into Badcocks that there's not that much need for it at the moment. Um, and he's desperate for um, office space. So um, to relocate his business, which I can't remember where it is, but it is local. Um, so that's why he wants to do it is just get the building back in use. And I think, I think the temporary permission is fine as long as it retain, remains temporary. And if they then do want to keep it as offices, I think they've got to market it as, but they've got to do the normal pub marketing, mm -hmm. prove, prove that it's defunct um, before that can happen. Um, but on the other hand, if it's in use, it's going to be busy. It's going to look better. It's not going to be a dead spot on the main road. Um, yeah, any questions? Mark You're probably used to go. I'm, probably, I'm the only person who remembers it when it was a pub. Um, <laughs> oh, you lived next door, didn't you? <laughs> Um, do you remember they built some strange wall at the back last time they... Yeah, it was a couple they, of years ago, wasn't wall it? wall right down the middle, I and mean, nobody understood why... We went to look at it, it's a cracking wall. Yeah, it's a brilliant wall, but it's oddly placed. <laughs> um, yeah, when we looked at this about coming back as a pub, I remember we had a lot of uh, worry about the people who live in Catherine Street, especially Phoenix Terrace, that back onto it for if there's going to be a beer garden, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I've looked at it with somebody else who thought about buying it as a pub, and um, it's, it obviously isn't viable as a pub anymore. Um, as Mr. Webb says, there's a lot of alternative drinking establishments within a stone's throw. Um, I think it'd be okay as, as offices. I'm not sure there's enough parking for all the offices that are there because their offices are currently over at Holwell, aren't they? And um, so presumably those people are used to driving to work and uh, there will be a lot of um, demand on parking. And we know that that's a, already a huge issue in that area. Um, so, yes, I think it's fine. I like the idea of it being a temporary permission. I wouldn't want to see it. This is a back door into residential. So any approval, hopefully, will have those caveats. But it's if it brings employment into the town, um, it will benefit all the premise, uh, businesses around Badcocks and Top of Catherine Street. So with that caveat, I think it's I think it's OK. Jane and I did walk past on our lunch break and stuck. Oh, yeah. I said Jane and I did walk past on our lunch break and stuck our noses through the window to have a look at what was going on inside. And I think they are definitely intending to um, for it to be a pub because they've built a really beautiful bar, yeah. um, like smack in the middle. So I think that intention is there, unless they're, unless it's a ploy. <laughs> um. They say there's no intention to modify anything inside. I think the Civic Society have pointed out something. There is a it's, an alteration inside that they're not happy with. It's this little red, this, where they've that changed. Quite yeah, mm. they're, they're quite hard to look at. Yeah. But if you look at the red dotted lines, that's where they're proposing new new walls. So they're just going to change around where these loos are, I think. I think to make them just work a bit better. I'm guessing they're just stud walls, are they? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Because they're just blocking up some entrances. Mm. One for the conservation officer, I guess. I don't think it's listed. Is it? No. No. Conservation area. Yeah. Conservation area, but it's internal. Mm -hmm. You can do what they do. What they want. Do what they want. All right. Any other 
um, any other thoughts, comments? I mean, I sort of grew up Mark said, um, yeah. Exactly, rather than a derelict building. So, um, um, as, as temporary, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, as a, as a temporary use of building, then I think we can support it. I think. Yeah. What What is the time scale that is meant to uh, advertise it for before he's allowed to do a permanent change of use? A year, isn't it? Yeah, it's tw it's twelve months. Yeah, so I am just think it might be worth calling that out because effectively that says, yes, it's an 18-month permission, but you've got to start six months from now before you're going to be in a position to make it permanent. He wants to do it for three years, doesn't he? Three years. Three years. Yeah, three years. So it'd be for two years. And I suppose once it's two years in, it'll be a better idea. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, okay. I agree. Yeah. I'm I happy think... to support with those caveats. Yeah, with the caveats that Mark... My only concern was not to use it as a back door into getting residential planning permission. So, um, if there's something to be said about that, then that would be okay. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Was it rough when Miss Llewellyn was there? He was. <laughs> was <rough>. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> Stumbling home to the Polish shop. Um, you say what yeah. I like now, what you can do exactly. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> the next one is 576 35 Long Ground, and it's a single story side extension. Which I'm very surprised that the Civic Society have got no issue with. It's another thing about parking, don't they? They're concerned about the parking, but mm. anyway. Um, so, this is the block plan and location plan, um, proposed site plan. So, they're going to add on a side extension, one story side extension to where the drive cuts in. Um, this is the existing uh, ground floor plan and you can see um, inter inside that small wall is where they're proposing to put the extension. Um, that small wall, that small wall. The curve. And um, this is the existing elevations. So it's a Victorian house that forms three terraces. Um, excuse me. And then this is the proposed family room. Excuse me. Um, and then this is the proposed elevation. And I, I've got no issue with the side extension. And um, I think it's fine. But I think compared to the Victorian house is just completely the wrong style. It's just looks like a stuck on lean to extension. It's just wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. It's just completely. It it's not sympathetic at all. It's, not <laughs> it's not pastiche. It's not sympathetic. It's just there. I don't understand why. Why? <laughs> I just think. Uh, the John Nelson principle is kicking in hard and fast. And so this is the photos of the house. So you can see, like, long ground, there's loads of different extensions, there's loads of different styles of houses. The house on the end is different to the other two, but I suspect there may have been a fourth house that matched that mm. on this side. It'll look like the one in the bottom right, won't it? No, it's the extension. Yeah. The extension will look like that. But that's hidden around the back. That's going to be on the... The other one's going to be facing the street. Right, yeah. And it's Pebble Dash. I don't know. It's white painted render. It's just the tone they've used. I don't know. <laughs> it's in the, is it again, is in the conservation area, isn't it, Long Ground? Or is it not? 
Uh, some of it certainly is. Yeah. Need to just double double check that for you. Hi, Helen. When I when I looked, this is on my patch. When I looked at this, I thought, well, at least they're keeping one car parking space. It'll be on that sort of slope, just bringing the car forward a little bit. But the, taking Catherine's point, that's what I noted, is that you've got stone fronted, um, and then you've got a pebble dash lean to, which would which would look quite odd. And I can't I can't think of any that are of a similar type on the end of a building in laying long ground. Um, I think maybe if it was set back or like attached to the this or existing extension at the back, it would look better. I just I don't understand why the architect has done that. It just it just looks uh, I, I'm also not quite clear what's happening about what looks to be a soil pipe running down there and presumably draining underneath where the um, that is a extension. Flu. It's a flu. It's a flu. Not oh, it's a flu, is it? Yeah. Which again, I'm not sure. Still seems a bit uncomfortable. Jane? I, I was just going to say that um, Helen would like to uh, speak. Helen. Oh, actually, Andy, you're right. It is a soil pipe. There's a flu in the wall, but there is also a soil pipe. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> hi, Helen. Oh. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, actually, I put my question in the chat. Um, it's not really, it's just an observation. I used to live in Sunnyside, and I think the whole area is um, a part of the conservation area. Um, most of the houses in the long ground have got that sort of frontage, like the um, the the. the photo that you showed um but there are a couple like i think just along a bit there's in fact you might be able to see it in that third photo there with the orange van there's a white bungalow so they might say oh well you know there's already a white bungalow um so it's all right if we do something else in in white or something in a different in a different finish and then of course then there's the uh, social housing a bit further down um yeah i just i just wanted to note that um, but I, I don't like it either. I don't like the look of it. That extension on the back that's in the second picture, I think that only went up about 10 years ago, maybe. Because my house used to back onto that. Actually, that second picture highlights another challenge, which is if you put an extension there, what do you do with your bins? Yeah. We are all about bins tonight. We are all about bins. <laughs> Hmm. Have we got planning grounds on which to object? Yeah. Have we? Yeah. Um, we can say it's unsympathetic to the host house. It doesn't match. Um, we can say it's taking away a car parking space, but I think that's tenuous because we're always telling people to have less, fewer um, car parking spaces. Um, it's just an uncomfortable design. It is the design, isn't it, that we're mainly <laughs> concerned about? It definitely could just be better like the, it, uh, that's not a planning just so we've no issue with them building an extension is that right oh do you want to say something <laughs> i was just going to add the phrase out of character with the host okay. with the host building Take, taking helen's point about the bungalow next door that actually runs perpendicular to the road it's not facing the road and it's a fill-in we said there may have well have been another building there or a yard or something and it's a fill-in it's not an attached building to something else and it's set back i don't know if you can still hear yes. me it's set back it is yes it is helen it is so no issues with the building extension we'd like to see it a bit more sympathetic to the surrounding housing the terrace that it's in um and the house to which it's attached um and the conservation officer will hopefully pick up on all of that as well does that make sense yeah and they're gonna have to do something about the soil pipe because just... and the bins and the bins yeah. well i suppose the bins the bins will just stay behind the yeah. it's not extending all the way back the bins will stay right. where they are but well, 
They want a solo pipe. Indeed, play with. Not actually none of us. Let's see. The WC five seven eight. Um, demolition of existing WC outhouse proposed single story. It's quite a large extension. Yeah, area extension. It talks about disabled. It's an Asta building. It talks about disabled access, but there's nothing in the documents I read about anything about being disabled. I'd be more sympathetic towards it if it was being making reasonable adjustments for disabled person, but there's nothing in there to say it, and it is quite a large one for the road. You can bring it up. You just have to bear with me to find it. What number was it? Five, seven, eight, four, seven, two, four, one, five, seven, zero. Two, oh, two, four, one, five, seven, zero. So this is the existing height plan with the proposed block plan. So it is, it is a very large extension, um, but it's also in a very large plot and obviously the extensions to the rear as well. Um, I did say in my notes I was concerned maybe about some overshadowing, but it is only one story. Being at the top is so annoying. Okay. The proposed elevations are what the civic society is concerned about. They think it's too tall. It is taller than 2.5. It's three meters. So it is just over the 2.5 meter development. So it is a bit taller, but it's still quite that roof. I don't know. <laughs> and then this is the proposed ground floor plan as well, which makes, which is also quite difficult to read. I'm not sure what's going on with. Big extension. Is it within PDR? It's not. Yeah. But it, as you say, it, it's a big plot. It can take that space. Um, yeah, and then just there's, there's, you know, there's clearly a ramp out out there to get uh, for wheelchair access. And I think it's interesting that it it's a very high roof, but you say it was a flat roof, Catherine. Yeah. So it may be potentially that they need the height. For some kind of um, hoist, hoist. Or, yeah, they have put a hoist. Yeah, so that 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 will that will yeah. probably explain the need for the the roof height. Yeah, there haven't been any comments from the neighbours either, but I'm not sure if they'd be aware. Of they it. should they should have been consulted. Yeah, I think it. I think it's Asta. Going to make the dining room pretty dark, but that's their choice. Yeah, I think they could maybe do with a bigger window on the kitchen to let more light in through to the dining room, but I'm not sure. Oh, some wheelchairs. 
Yeah, I think if they're putting in all of the diameters for wheelchair movement and the information about the hoist and things, I think this is for a very specific yeah. person. And if it's Asta, I suppose our choice is either to do it or move them somewhere else. Yeah, uh, I have no objection to this one. No, um, I think subject to no impact on the neighbour's immunity, I have no objection either. If the um, if we can, do not anyone else else? What I said. <laughs> So, so that was proposed by Steve. <laughs> so we're not objective, but we're the subject to immunity or just not objection? I think I'm going to propose subject to no lack, loss of immunity. So, okay, go, go with that. that. Go with that. Yeah. Okay, and that's unanimous. Brilliant. Now we're finished. Now we're Unless there's anyone, anything else that you want to talk about? Well, you do want us to vote on the remainder, don't you? Yes, please. I'm happy to proposed and that's unanimous as well thank you the next one um date of next meeting is 10th of october and it will be catherine's last meeting with us okay <laughs> wear your glad rags um thank you very much and good night everybody should we make it black tie yeah. Do you want to wear a black tie? <laughs>